This is it. I've recorded a video on Knuckles as the resistance leader in Sonic Forces Speed Battle, and I've got my one about the posters uploading. I'm a little behind, but it can't get worse. Hey guys, it's the Lyoko Gem, and what the heck is happening this week? First, Leader Knuckles, and then the frickin' mobile game, and now we've got this? I'm so done. But okay, let's stop freaking out and get into analyzing the Forces trailer. This is gonna be a long video. So we open up on Eggman speaking about Sonic. Not sure what he's saying, because again, just in case you forgot, this gem doesn't speak Japanese. Anyways, we've got these weird tube things holding what appear to be cubes. We then get a shot of Eggman walking down this place before going to Orbot, who's typing away at the computer over there before Infinite is shown waking up. And right off the bat, there's something big to talk about. But first, let me make a minor comment on Orbot. I'm glad he's in the game. Orbot is a fun character, and I always love his interactions with Eggman. It's no doubt that in this game, he's going to serve as comic relief, which is a very good thing. To me, Sonic should not be a constant edge fest like this trailer is giving off. It should have its lighthearted and funny moments. moments, and with Orbot here, I'm sure he and the other characters will deliver on that. But then there's literally everything else going on here, and I'm just at a loss for words. For starters, this basically proves that Infinite was created by Eggman. Meaning that I am now and forever officially wrong on my infinite in the custom character theory. But that aside, it's kind of sad because I actually wrote a full-fledged theory on this back right before Mania came out and was getting ready to record it but put it down because apparently Mania had all kinds of information about forces and now I just wish I had made it anyways so I could bask in the glory of being right. But oh well. However, I'm going to bring up some points from that video into this one. But I guess if anybody wants to see what I wrote for that video, I suppose I could drop it in a Google Doc if anybody's really interested. But anyways, for starters, Infinite is there, and it looks like all these tubes are failed attempts to make Infinite before. But we've got this one tube that has Infinite, and it seems to me as if he's just woken up. Now, here's what I think, and a lot of this is from the old video that I ended up not making. But Eggman was looking into his grandfather's research on how to build an ultimate life form, right? And he decided, what if I built an ultimate life form, like my cool grandpa? So he gets cooking and fails, but finds a Phantom Ruby, an intern, Classic Sonic, and I don't know what the heck happens, but things happen. Point is, something happens to the Phantom Ruby where it breaks or something, so now I'm going to delve into something a friend of mine go who goes by D the Hedgehog said. So when the news about the mobile game came out, before this trailer, we commented on the Phantom Ruby, right? And he said, well, what if Eggman is trying to reverse engineer the Phantom Ruby, and maybe Infinite's gem is the successful attempts to recreate the Phantom Ruby? Either that, or maybe he's trying to remake the Phantom Ruby, so that when Infinite inevitably betrays him, he's ready. And while looks like I'm thinking the former is true, that Infinite is a successful attempt to recreate the Phantom Ruby. But the question is, how? Well, here's the deal. We're back into my theories. We know that Eggman is trying to build his own ultimate life form, right? Well, imagine he did. Rather than using the power of chaos, he used Hypergoon energy and the Phantom Ruby to do this. And why Hypergoons? Well, you see, I feel that this is the case due to a lot of the powers he has. For starters, Infinite has been displayed to use lasers, which could be taken from the Laser Wisp. His ability to fly could come from the Crimson Eagle or Hover Wisps, and his ability he uses in the beginning of the Enter Infinite trailer could be uh, Void or Asteroid. Furthermore, if we compare the bottom of Negawisp's body, her tentacles, to that of Infinite's uh, hair, whatever that is, then we see that they're very similar. 
So I believe Hyper Goons plus Phantom Ruby recreation equals infinite. But that's just me. However, if infinite is truly another ultimate life form, then that raises the question of Shadow. Did he join Eggman because of Infinite? Did he want to fight Infinite, or did he befriend him as something similar to him? What's going on there? But I just want to point out, this is also very likely Eggman's lab. Also, actually the lines have been translated, and the first line we hear Eggman say is that, Prepare yourself, Sonic. I've put all my years of hatred for you into this. My ultimate weapon is complete! This implies that he's been working on Infinite for a while. Anywho, let's move on to the next scene before I end up talking about the first few seconds for an hour. Next up, we've got Infinite laying the smack down on Sonic. Okay, we've seen that before, but what we didn't see was Sonic actually passing out. Honestly, the way Sonic passes out makes me wonder. Maybe Park Avenue is how Sonic is defeated and is the very beginning of the war, and then Eggman or Infinite do something that makes him absent, or, well, something. But that doesn't make sense. Anyway, Infinite says, My name is Infinite. Basically confirming that, yeah, that was probably him waking up. Sonica! Do I really need to explain what Tails says? Anywho, the text says that, The series that sold 3.5 million units. Woo! Go Sonic! Keep on running and selling! Oh well, I guess we move on. Knuckles is speaking to the Resistance in the base, which is cool. We see Amy at the computer, along with Silver and Chaotix. He says that Eggman's army has broken through the defenses in Green Hill Zone. I personally believe this plays into another scene, so I'll elaborate on that later. Then, Infinite shoots a laser at some rubble and makes a few explosions in Park Avenue. And, uh, I know these look like random NPCs, but is that Chaos and Knuckles behind the second one? The way it's viewing might be for trailer purposes, or to make it more ominous, or maybe it's the Resistance reviewing footage or something. Then it says that 99% of the world is dominated, and we know this, but damn, that trailer is really showing that. Then Silver talks in the base. He says that everyone is scared. But then we get something or someone walking towards Tails and a group of NPCs in Park Avenue as they kind of cower in fear. Now first, right on the side there, we see a bear. So it looks like that's likely the what the custom bear is going to look like, or at the very least, its default. It makes me see what they mean about the custom character designs. They want to make sure that the actual Sonic characters stick out amongst the random custom characters and NPCs, and it looks like they did a good job at that, because Tails sticks out like a sore thumb. But my guess is that it's either Infinite himself charging towards them, or even better, what if it's Shadow doing it? Think about it, Shadow is the one they're looking for in City Heights, and if they found him there, terrorizing people, then that would make sense, as it kind of looks as if Tails is pleading at the beginning before instinctively trying to protect himself. And that's when Sonic finds them and saves both the people and Tails and asks Shadow, what the heck? Before they have a quick boss battle, the people scatter, and Tails watches, Sonic wins, and the others appear with Infinite. But that's just a theory, as always. It could just be Infinite or Shadow, or with the heights in relation to Tails, it could be Chaos or Zavik, as we notice that they're kind of looking down on him and the others by the angle. Judging by the way they're stepping, maybe it is Zavik because I don't think Chaos walks like that. Or maybe just some robots, but they're a little too short for that, but it would explain the scattered robot parts in the infinite scene. But I don't know. Moving on, we've got the custom character surrounded by some robots. I don't know where this is, I don't think it's the pyramid base in Green Hill because the color scheme doesn't match, but there's a chance it could get darker as it goes on. Or it could be Eggman's lab or base or whatever at the beginning, but I doubt that as well. Chances are it's an entirely new location. It then says, FIGHT BACK! Modern Sonic saves the custom character from the robots. There's nothing really to note here. But look how nice and clean that homing attack looks. Nice and fresh, the graphics have definitely been bumped up. Sonic says, let's go, partner. So that line leads me to make the following guesses. 
First off, if this really is the pyramid in Green Hill, which I doubt, but if it is, then Sonic and the custom character split up for different tasks. But the custom character gets in trouble only for Sonic to rush back and save them. But I don't think that's the case. What I think here is that Sonic and the custom character will often split up and often get brought back together for different cases, whether they just do it themselves, the resistance, enemies, or other external forces. Point is, they keep ending up with each other and are cool with working together, and there's more evidence towards that later in the trailer that I'll get into. Either way, I think the custom character came into this place alone, and Sonic happened to come as well and save their neck. Also, the dialogue of, let's go partner, suggests that this is going to lead into a tag team stage. We get some City Heights gameplay, which we've seen before, cool stuff, NEXT! We get some modern Green Hill gameplay, only this time side-scrolling. And while I know this is not a new stage, it should be noted that this wasn't in any of the pictures we saw. Also, with the way Green Hill is looking, a uh, petition to call uh, Modern Green Hill Zone Deserted Memory Zone? Just saying. Then we've got Knuckles pushing the custom character in front of everyone. He says, do your best, rookie. Now, I'm going to guess that this is the same scene as before with all the others in the Resistance base, judging by the placement of Knuckles being roughly the same. What I'm guessing is the following. The conversation either goes that, oh no, Higman has taken over Green Hill, and Silver's like, hold on, Park Avenue is also an immediate problem as well. The city is literally on fire, that is an immediate problem, Green Hill is, can wait, the people are scared. And I guess the custom character walks in and Knuckles says, okay, the rookie can handle it. So we go out to save Park Avenue after that, and then we leave it at that for now. I'll pick up a more later. Then we get the custom character in Park Avenue. But next up, we see classic Sonic in Park Avenue. That's the first time we've seen him there. Of course, we've seen a little bit of his Park Avenue level just last week in the photos, but still. Since we only see literally 4 seconds of Classic Sonic in this trailer, and I'm not even joking, it's 4 seconds, I'm gonna talk about all of him in here, well, just in this next segment. For one, why are you in this game? Like, yes, I know about Mania's ending, I get that, but why is he here, and what is he doing? We've literally only seen Classic Sonic in Green Hill, and just now Park Avenue, so I can't help but wonder where he falls into all of this, because they have given very little indication to that. I mean, there are times where I forget about Classic Sonic entirely, and it makes me wonder and... Wait, actually, I got an idea. Classic Sonic has been around so little, and the song is always talking about the two of us referring to Modern Sonic and the custom character. Meanwhile, we have Infinite's theme referring to the fact that this is an illusion. Open up your eyes. What if Classic Sonic is an illusion because of that? But that's dumb because of Mania's ending, I don't know. Point is, what the heck is Classic Song doing? Is he even he with the heroes or part of the Resistance? Because the only indication of that is the conversation with Tails and Eggman in the Classic boss battle. But due to some old leaks, I'm not sure how reliable Tails talking to him is a genuine part of him being in the Resistance since they're looking more and more true these days. But I guess that's all there is about Classic Sonic in his literal 4 seconds of footage. Then there's Eggman's plan to destroy the world. And we don't know what it is, but the fact that Eggman wants to destroy it rather than rule it is a tad bit surprising. Just what is he up to? But then we get Eggman and Green Hill, and man does it look pretty. Look at how flawless his nose, I mean uh, mustache hair looks. He says that in three days, my plan will succeed. But again, what is his plan? Like, what the heck, Eggman? Anywho, next we've got the scene from the Enter Infinite trailer. It's looking a lot better, and that's great. Anywho, next up we've got Sonic falling to his doom. Wow, we haven't seen anything like that before. Now, I'm not sure how he got to this point, but I have a few guesses. But first, let's look at this location and the way Sonic is falling. 
For starters, we can note that whatever this is, it's probably not completely dark, as we can see a shadow on part of it, or at least maybe it is and the thing is illuminating it. I don't know, lighting isn't exactly my forte. Maybe at night or in space, I can't really tell. A friend of mine suggested to me that this is the pyramid in Green Hill Zone, but I don't think so. The shape of the hole is different and the lights that go in and everything. They've got very different design and I don't see them changing the design of the pyramid stuff so late in the game, but that's just me. I personally think that this location is likely the same spot as the one from where Sonic saves the custom character. I'm thinking that the custom character is already inside and then, due to whatever, Sonic falls in, has his level, and BAM! Tag team when you meet up with the custom character. But if we note the way that Sonic is falling, we can tell that he's flailing his arms and looks very surprised. He probably didn't mean to intentionally do this. Maybe he fell off something into there, or something. However, I like to think that Sonic was gonna face Infinite, and you know, Infinite and his Phantom Ruby shenanigans, and Sonic runs up to him, but Infinite just kinda Phantom Rubies him over to this place. But yeah, I guess we move on to the next scene. It just features Eggman in Park Avenue, likely the scene with all the villains. After that, we've got a zoom into Infinite, and gotta say, I like this angle. Nice camera work on Sega's part. Incredibly anime. <laughs> Infinite then rushes up to the custom character, to which he's surprised. Now, I know exactly what the custom character is thinking in this moment. This guy is faster than Sonic! But for real, it looks to me as if that's the power of the Phantom Ruby at work. Infinite is probably not faster than Sonic at all. He's just warping reality to make it appear that way. Which honestly sounds familiar. Now, the line that Infinite says here is, Psh, nothing personal, kid. Okay, for real though, he says, Alright, I will bring you in this world pain. For real, that's probably one of the edgiest things ever said in this franchise. Sorry, Shadow, but there's no denying that you've officially been replaced with that one. But man, Infinite has a lot to dish out, and I'm excited to see what he does. As for the location of this scene, well, we've seen it before in the Enter Infinite trailer. It's likely the same spot from the very beginning, and when the custom character is trying to do a fist bump to Infinite. And there was a moment of hesitation with this, because it does look slightly different than before. My guess is that the Enter Infinite trailer was using an earlier build of the level. I don't understand why Sega insists on showing us earlier builds, but whatever. Anywho, I originally thought that this was the Lost Hex, but that obviously is not the case. Most have said it's Metropolis Zone from Sonic Heroes, but I'm not too sure about that due to the color scheme, but maybe that's what Eggman did to this place. At first I thought it was Frozen and wanted to call it Icebound Metropolis, but that doesn't seem like the case. Which is why I think that it may just be a new stage entirely. Let's just wait and see. However, if this really is Metropolis Zone, then that leads me to believe that, more than likely, the returning stages in the game will be from games important to the villains. So I'm guessing that Metal's got Metropolis from Heroes, and maybe a place from CD as well. Shadow's getting a stage from SA2, Chaos from SA1, and the other guy, an area from Lost World. So, somewhere in the Lost Hex. But with that said, let's move on to the next scene. We've got a shot of all of the villains together, and my guess is this is the first shot of all villains that are shown together. Moving on, we've got Silver saying, There is hope, do not get discouraged, before panning to the other Resistance members looking, well, discouraged. Now, these are simple. These are not one coherent scene and are actually cut together. I honestly have no idea what Amy, Silver, and Charmy may be looking at, so I guess we move on. Then we've got several Resistance members in some canyon in the middle of nowhere, and Knuckles says, Alright, let's go! Now, one thing to note is Rouge is making her first appearance in this game. Interesting to see that she's fighting against Shadow. Looks like she really did break her promise, but I guess that was retconned, so that promise doesn't exist. It's interesting. And the army of OCs is, well, freakish. Like, what the heck? Most of these are disturbing. 
But wait, looks like there's a new kind of wispin that they're holding. I haven't seen that one before, and I have no idea what it might be. Maybe a new wisp? But I also want to comment that this looks cool and all, don't get me wrong, but this place looks a bit bland and boring, and I honestly wouldn't care for it as a level, because it just looks uninteresting and a tad uninspired. Yes, I understand that it's a whole brink of death, final charge scene, and that the setting reflects that. I get that. But honestly, I wouldn't want to play this as a stage. But anyways, then it says, FIGHT BACK! Right off the bat, we jump into Sonic and the custom character, swinging around what appears to be one of the Death Egg robots in what appears to be Green Hill Zone. My guess is we'll be recreating the custom character CGI, and maybe the custom character will throw Sonic up into the air to home in on it. Pretty much confirms tag team bosses. Of course, that was obvious. Then there's a little bit more of modern Green Hill Zone. Looks like the Death Egg robot in the corner is destroyed, so possibly taking place after the previously mentioned boss fight, but there are a lot of Death Egg robots, so take that statement with a grain of salt. Then Park Avenue and City Heights. Cool. But then we've got a bit of the metal boss fight, and whoa, the cubes are surrounding him. I'm a little annoyed because he's phasing out, which looks like he's an illusion, which again is boring, but whatever. Then there's the crab bot again. The caption then reads, Save the world with you and Sonic's friendship. Teamwork, friendship, magic, yay! Moving on, we've got Sonic pointing at Infinite and stating, I'll push through everything you throw at me, no matter what. Push me on through until the battle's won. And there's the Sonic I know and love. It's been so long. I see Sonic as a character to be pretty easygoing, but in this, he's gonna get pretty mad, and it's nice to see a bit of anger. And it's not edgy, I'm gonna kill you type of anger, but just legit, reasonable anger. This statement that Sonic makes, this challenge he makes to Infinite, that defiance, in fact, not only defiance, but that resistance, is exactly what I want to see. Let's fight through Eggman and Infinite's forces together, Sonic. Oh yeah, and judging by the metal they're standing on and the lighting, this is likely Green Hill Zone, probably in the factory area or at least on top of it, or the entrance or something, since they seem to be exposed to direct sunlight. Then we've got Tag Team Green Hill Zone, which is nice. Then the custom character getting ready to give Infinite a fist bump for god knows what reason. Then Sonic and the custom character high-fiving, and I knew it was a high-five. But yeah, I also love the little stars that come out of it. Very nice touch. Then it looks like they didn't fix that drift animation! And I just say okay to that. It looks awkward and bad, but whatever. Then we've got Sonic and the custom character fist bumping, as he says, so long, partner. They're in Park Avenue on the bridge, and that one confuses me a bit. Is the fight with Metal a tag team boss fight? Or maybe there's another one entirely? I don't know, it's weird, but that's besides the point. Look at this scene, the way they're both smiling. I love it, and I'm glad to have that there. While I don't particularly play or watch Japanese cutscenes, I can't help but admire the way the delivery is done here. So happy and full of life, and I love that. I hope Roger can bring the same energy. But yeah, that to me shows that Sonic and the custom character will be splitting up a lot and going their own ways before inevitably running into each other yet again. But yeah, we close on the logo. Sonic Forces! And I gotta say, that it looks great. Forces looks amazing, and I'm so excited to see more of it. I want this game so bad! And if this trailer isn't enough for you, then know that Nakamura has already stated that he wanted to show us more, namely the bosses and more of the latter half of the game, meaning that there's even more where that came from, and I for one am so ready for that. Anywho, I think that wraps all of that up. This was an amazing trailer, and I love it a lot, and Force is going to be amazing, and I'm so, so ready for it! There's going to be a lot of amazing stuff coming, and I'm definitely going to be along for the ride. And if you want to follow along for the ride, then be sure to like and subscribe, and follow my social medias at Tumblr, Twitter, and Discord, all of which linked below. But that's all for this video, and with all of that being said, this has been Leo Kujem, a Warp and Out.